Hello, I'm Simon and today I have got a very cool piece of kit to have a look at and that is an AviWest bonded cellular encoder. Now if you've watched my previous videos you know that I've been using all types of live streaming encoder for a while and AviWest, AviWest is something that's new to me so I wanted to have a closer look and to see exactly how it stacks up compared to the competition. The first thing I should point out is AviWest UK have very kindly loaned me this and this is the Air 320 so this is the top of the range of the Air series. There are four variants of it. The one that I'm interested in the most is the Air 220 as the 220 is part of the Be On Air package that they're currently selling. Be On Air gives you three main components. The first one is an Air 220 encoder. It's a license for the Mojo Pro, which is a smartphone app, and it's the facility to use the StreamHub Cloud. And the StreamHub Cloud is where the output is sent from this, which then gets forwarded on to your IP destinations, such as Vimeo, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, that sort of thing. Now, I should point out this is the Air 320, and as such, it does have some um, functionality which isn't found in the Air 220 Be On Air package. So um, what I would say is if there's anything that you're unsure of, ask me questions in the comments below and I'll do what I can to tell you what's here, what's there and what's not included in certain units. So the first thing I want to point out is that I've had this for a couple of days only and I have, as I say, been really pleasantly surprised by one, how easy the unit is to use, um, some of the things that it does which gives me more reassurance than other units on the market at the moment. Um, but firstly, I should point out the build quality. This is heavy. Now, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a very positive way. It's well built. Um, this feels like it will last in the field. Some of the other units, um, I, I don't want to name any names, but some of the other units have got very sensitive small buttons um, and you know the, the, the build quality doesn't feel all that. This, sure, it's got a plastic kind of casing, but underneath I can see a metal frame on it and it just feels solid. It does feel very well made. Also, it's the attention to detail on it is very good as well. So it looks like it's got a belt loop here, which you can put it onto a belt. It's got a quarter Whitworth thread, so you can mount it onto a camera or an arm or a bracket. It's got a little, here we go, a little soft case that goes around it, which you can then hang off of a tripod or a shoulder strap, or just imagine, as long as you've got the airflow, you can put it into a rucksack as well. So you can, you know, transport it, move it around, use it operationally in a few different ways, and that's quite nice. I'm going to have a quick look at the unit itself and tell you a bit more about it and what it does. Um, so first of all, I should point out um, that the connections on this are very well thought out and I'll explain why. So the first thing I want to point out is the inputs and that is it's got an HDMI input and an SDI input and you're thinking well you know HDMI well that's you know that's going to be there and an SDI well that's a bit nice not, not all the other competition have SDI but what makes this stand out from the crowd is it loops through so you've also got an SDI output and you've also got an HDMI output and what's very nice about the HDMI connectors on here are they're locking HDMIs. HDMI is a consumer cable and if you've used an HDMI like I have in the past and it pulls out, that won't be the case. Once you've put an HDMI in here you can lock it in place and that gives you a bit more confidence um, that, that you can use that particular format if you're using a camera which doesn't have an SDI or a smaller GoPro type camera if it's in a vehicle, you know that once it's gone in here it's locked in place, you just have to worry about the, the camera end. Um, I think the only camera I've used for the locking HDMI would be something like a Canon C100, I'm not even sure whether the newer C200s have got it on, but certainly there's a locking connector at this end. Um, the other thing that you have on here as well is analog audio inputs and the DC connector which is on the front panel, which is on a locking two pin Limo style connector, so a professional connector that won't pull out. Um, the buttons and knobs on here are all very chunky. Now, again, that's not a bad thing. Chunky means that they're easy to use. I wouldn't have any problems. They're not fiddly, they're not small, and they feel well made. They feel very positive to the touch. Um, the other thing I should show you on the side is you have USB, which is for your modems. So you can plug in external Huawei style modems. Um, you've got two, one on either side of the unit. And if you look at the back of the unit, and if I can work this out, here we go. And if I take that back panel off, you can see the two inbuilt modems as well. Now, what's interesting is that the two inbuilt modems have got four SIM slots. So you can have four SIMs in here, 
Um, only two will work, but the four sims you can select through the menu to see which one's giving you the best signal. So um, if you've got four separate networks as opposed to roaming sims, you can choose which one's going to work best for you, select it um, without swapping them over or anything fiddly, which is quite nice. Um, so let's turn it on. The first thing you'll notice when you turn it on is you get a couple of lights lighting up on the top of the unit. There are three lights here. The first one indicates that the data is being sent. The second one, which looks like um, linked paper clips, for want of a better phrase, or links of a chain, show that it's actually linked to the stream hub. The stream hub is vital to this unit, and we'll go into that in a bit more detail in a minute. And then the third light is for your power to show that the unit itself is charging. Something I only noticed this morning, as I said, I've had it for about three days, is that if you turn it sideways, the display also turns sideways. I mean, that's quite a good attention to detail. It's a bit silly, but I mean, it depends how you've got it mounted. You can still see the screen without twisting your head 90 degrees. It's just these little things that I keep discovering about this unit, which, which is really quite neat. Now, let me tell you a bit more about how this works. So the idea behind a bonded cellular encoder like this is that you can plug in your camera and you can live stream with it. Um, and what it does is it gives you that reassurance. So you can have up to six sources plugged into this. So you can have Ethernet, Wi-Fi, two modems and two external USB modems. You could just run it off the two internal modems. And for my test the last couple of days, I've been doing just that or jumping onto a Wi-Fi network. Now, the idea behind bonded cellular, which I've covered in other videos, is that you've got more sources, more pipes effectively to get your data up to the cloud and then onto YouTube or to wherever you want to show, wherever you want to stream your video. Um, and that makes the difference between someone who might be using an iPhone to stream and someone who's using a professional piece of kit. It is the redundancy of the unit that gives you that extra reliability, so those extra internet connections effectively. Now, there's a few differences, as I said, between the Air 320 and the 220. The 320 is an HEVC encoder, whereas the 220 is an H.264 encoder. The Air 220, as part of the Be On Air package, is subsidised, so you're actually saving money by buying it as part of that package. As of now, January, well, February the 1st, 2021, the package price for the Be On Air is around about 3,000, just under 3,000 euros, and then the ongoing price per year is just under 800 euros, which pays for your license for the Mojo Pro and also for the StreamHub Cloud. Now, StreamHub Cloud, as I said, is the part that takes the video and sends it onto YouTube, but you can also have physical StreamHub units. So rack mounted units which would have an SDI output and those are the types of bit of kit that broadcasters will generally be using. So the 320 within the menu system you can choose whether you send it to a stream hub cloud or to send it to a stream hub which might be at a control room with a broadcaster. The 220 as part of the Be On Air package as I understand it doesn't enable you to set more destinations so you are locked into your stream hub cloud. So can you use it for broadcast? Well, that's something that I've been talking to Avowest about, and you can. So, the minimum latency is 800 milliseconds, and uh, Avowest use something called SST, Safe Stream Technology, which takes your data and sends it via the bonded, in, bonded encoded connections up to the stream hub. The latency between your cloud stream hub and a broadcaster stream hub should be, again, as I'm led to understand, about 300 milliseconds. So what you can do is you can stream to your cloud and you can set an extra destination which might be a broadcaster. So you can actually tunnel it from your cloud to a broadcaster. So what makes this unit, although reasonably pricey, even better is you've got one piece of kit that does it all. You can stream to your cloud to go to IP destinations such as YouTube, Facebook, etc. But you can also send the same stream to a broadcaster. Now, StreamHub Cloud is really, really good. I've used other people's um, cloud type solutions for handling streams and they've all been really easy. Now, I'm not saying the cloud from Stream, the StreamHub Cloud is difficult, but it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can go in and you can change a lot of settings. And a couple of those settings tripped me up at first, I'll be honest. But as soon as I discovered what I could do to make it fit into the workflow that I was used to and behave like other units I've used, I've realized that the power and the flexibility of this unit is by far in advance of other encoders out there on the market. I was really quite surprised by that. So the way that the AviWest works um, 
is, I mean, this, this is a bit of kit that's come from a broadcast background. That's really where its pedigree is. Um, but what it will do is when it starts streaming, it starts streaming obviously at a lower data rate and it builds up to as high a data rate as it can get over your bonded multiple connections. Um, and as such, it will start delivering a stream which is a smaller resolution. So I'll put them on screen just now to flash them up for you so you can see what the data rates are. But at a low data rate, it will only stream a low resolution, like PAL video, not even HD. But as the data rate increases, it increases the resolution that it delivers. Now this caught me out because what I started doing was streaming to Vimeo and Vimeo saw that the first resolution was something like 352 by 588 pixels and it locked to that resolution. So even when I got up to a data rate of about six megabits a second, which it was sending HD, it was still only seeing or only locked into this 352 pixel wide resolution. Now that's quite good if you think about it. If you're a broadcaster and you've got a reporter with an AvaWest unit who's out in the field and there's a really bad signal or low data rates over the multiple connections, something big's happened let's just say, you're still getting a picture. Even if it's a lower quality picture you're still receiving a picture. And that got me thinking that you can actually use this on much lower data rates than you can other units. Granted, it will deliver a lower picture quality, but you will still get a picture. Um, what you can do is you can go into the menu system of the Stream Hub and you can set your profile, because you can load different streaming profiles on here, not output profiles, but streaming profiles, and you can set the delay, you can set the data rate, but you can also force resolution so it matches it. And that means that instead of starting off at a lower data rate, it tries to get up to the minimum data rate for that resolution, two and a bit meg, I think it is for HD, but it'll get up to that as quickly as possible so it is delivering that HD quality straight away. It won't give you a lower resolution. So as I say, if you want to lo lock it into a particular resolution, you can do that from um, within the menu of the unit. Now the other thing is that the maximum data rate this unit um, offers, I think it's something about 20 megabits a second, um, which, is, which is really good compared to some of the other units on the market. The other thing that you can do within the Stream Hub is you can go in and you can adjust the audio data rate as well. This is a biggie. So you can go from anything, I believe, between about 64 up to 256 kilobits a second. So you know that you're delivering decent audio quality and that's and that, that's really, really good. A lot of these things you can change within the Stream Hub Cloud. It just gives you that bit more flexibility. If you want to run it at a basic level, you can. I would say this unit is intended for people with a bit of streaming experience. Um, if not, you will need to get used to how it works. Um, but from that point of view, I would say it's a very powerful system. Now, I've been using this stuff the last two to three days, and I have to say, you know, I am impressed with it. It is a nice piece of kit. Um, my only concern is, you know, for broadcast use, how many broadcasters are actually using AviWest hardware to receive um, the signals. That's something that I need to do a bit more research about. Um, but there are ways around that. You can send um, an SRT output or you can send an RTMP, RTMPS output from it as well. And that's not just a push, but you can have that as a pull. So you can give a broadcaster address, they can type that in through um, VLC, something like that, and then they've got your stream. So again, that's something that's, that's pretty good. Um, the Stream Hub price is 790 euros a year, just under 800 euros a year. And you might think, well, that's almost double the price of some of the competitors. But then if you look what that offers, that offers multiple IP outputs. So to date, what I've been using to multicast is going through services like Restream, which in itself is something like four or $500 a year. Um, and that's included within the cloud price of this. Um, the other neat thing is that Mojo Pro app, not something I'm particularly interested in, I haven't really tried it to be quite honest, had a quick fiddle with it, but it means that you can stream from your phone. And again, the way that works is that it's bonded. So you've got a SIM card in your phone, and if you're in an area that's got Wi-Fi, you can also jump onto a Wi-Fi, or you can carry a Wi-Fi hotspot with you, which is, um, you know, got a SIM card that gives you two SIMs, two routes up to the internet and the Mojo Pro app also uses the SST, Safe Stream Technology, not an RTMP stream, it's the SST. So it gives you a lower latency um, and it gives you that, um, you know, that guarantee that your packets are going to get up otherwise they get resent as I understand it works. Now overall 
I've had a bit of fun with this. Um, the quality of the stream, what can I say? It's, it's, it's spot on. It's exactly as I would expect it to be. Um, I have had issues with other systems with progressive outputs on cameras such as my Sony FX9. Um, the FX6 I've been using predominantly in 25p, but I have sent a PSF output um, as well, and that went through the Avi West, and we had Avi West in France having a look at it on their equipment, and it looked a lot better than the other systems that I'd used as well. Um, I think the ability to be able to really control your data rate, your bit rate to push it up as well, gives you that um, extra quality with this unit. So, in a nutshell, I'm not going to go too much into the menu systems, but in a nutshell, that is the Avi West Be On Air system. Um, there aren't many videos about it on the internet, there's not a great deal of information, so if you've got questions about it, do please leave questions, comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, turn on the little bell button icon thingy so that you get notified when I make more videos. And yeah, ask away. Um, let me know what your thoughts are on the system. Let me know what you're doing with live streaming. Thanks for watching again.